Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a what if. Being the thumb what if for the, the thumbnail of the what if is right here. This is gonna be a universal intro from now on. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Until I can get more time, because I do have school, summer school at least, I won't be able to post any really good intros. So this is gonna be in intro for a while. So, I hope to see you later. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get in to the what if. Wait, wait, nigga. So this is part two of what if Naruto was God's reincarnation. You guys obviously like the what if first part at least. So let's hope I deliver a good second part. <clears throat> you know, I'm always lacking when it comes to the following parts. But yeah. Now the what if starts off with the you get interest exams. I don't think I went over that. <clears throat> now, um, Deku, it would have. We're, I'm we're, being honest. We're, I think I already did the 10 month time skip, but if I didn't, Deku, we we're gonna have Deku skip the 10 month time skip. Uh, oh, we're gonna do a time skip past the 10 months, <clears throat> all the way to the start of the UA entrance exams. Now, Deku would arrive as everyone. There is a little bit, you know, confused. Like, why is the dude kid with the red hair? King around a gourd that looks to be made of sand. Where, if from what they can tell, <clears throat> as everyone is wondering, why is Deku wearing having a gourd of sand? And this is when um, Deku will see a girl about to fall. When suddenly the cork on his the cork on his sand gourd on his gourd would then fly off as sand then appears under the girl um flies from his gourd and uh, under the girl. Before catching her and standing her back up. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if I'm being honest, I don't know who I want this girl to be because I don't want it to be Uraraka. I'm not sure yet. So let me think about this. Alright, so you spin the wheel and decided it to be Mina. Now, Deku would ask the girl if she's okay before the girl would say, Yeah, she just slipped on some. Um, <clears throat> she slipped on her quirk but while she was using her quirk now this Mina doesn't have as much control because we do not we see Mina skate I believe I've seen Mina skate using her quirk and Mina said she was trying this while moving but end up slipping if um slipping off of it and falling obviously the girl will then tell Izuku that her name is Mina Ashido before Izuku would then say that his name is um Izuku Midoriya Now I'm gonna do something. Um, I'm going to have Izuku's father take on the name of Raza. As he would then ask your father, he's the Earth hero Raza, right? As Deku would say, my father's a hero. As this is actually something Deku's never known about. Whenever his father goes out, he doesn't have the red. He wars with Deku. He doesn't have the red hair. It's basically a part of his costume. He basically dresses like Raza. <clears throat> as Mina would then say, yeah. As she would then pull up a picture. As Deku would look at the picture. And would be shocked. His father's a hero. Like he he finally recognized Raza the, um, Raza the Earth Hero. After years of seeing him, <clears throat> so obviously Deku would be a little bit shy to not to know that his father was a hero the whole time, but no one told him. So yeah, anyways, moving on. Deku would then say that he has to go for, to go into the exams. As Mina says, wishes him good luck, and they go their separate ways. Now, upon entering UA, um, do the testing process. If I'm being honest, Deku wouldn't, um, 
<clears throat> Dwarf Deku is pretty smart. Deku would do something different. Deku would actually use that eyeball of sand that Gara used in the Chunin Intercepts. He would have used that um, to spy on people. <clears throat> to spy on people's tests to get as much um to get as much information and probably get the best scores because that could well well it is a written test he i'm he's like he's pretty sure that there are some probably some intelligent enhance intelligence enhancing quirks some person in here i mean there's a lot of students applying it to ua so you know obviously there has we're saying there's at least a couple now, moving on, um, Deku, um, after getting all the right answers from what he could see on the test, would have then canceled out the Jutsu and would have sat there, arms crossed the whole time, just standing there. As he then sees the person next to him put down their test as if they were finished. As Deku looks the first and finally recognizes him, as he says, Bakugo. As Bakugo says, What do you want, Deku? As Deku says, You know what? Nothing. You know, I thought you would change, but I guess from seeing how you act now, I doubt that's possible. Now, moving on. Um, Deku, um, President Mike would have came to every, well, would have told everyone that it was time for the test to, um, it was the ending of the written portion of the test and to go to the practical portion in the arenas, areas, the battlegrounds, whichever, I forgot what it was called, but we do know that they go there. <clears throat> now, Deku would have been preparing, um, to leave. Well, Deku would then get an idea, as Deku would hold a single hand sign before disappearing, as his body, as what everyone then sees, was Deku's body then dropped down to the ground as it was sand, as the sand then goes into a direction, as Deku has used a sand body flicker. You do know that there, there's probably like a bunch of elements, you got sand, like you could probably add a sand, sand body flicker, um, an earth body flicker, wind, fire, something like that. You could probably do a lot of things with body flickering technique. A lot of special effects to make it unique to you. And Deku would arrive at the testing site and would wait for everyone else who's quite amazed at what he had done. For what they, they had seen, Deku had basically teleported, but Ida, who's watching Deku, had actually seen Deku moving at a high speed. While it was somewhat like teleportation, it was a more of a high speed movement rather than teleportation. Actually, now I believe the um, body flicker is actually somewhat of a but um, teleportation type jutsu. If I'm not, I hope I'm not wrong, but I do believe it is more of a teleportation type jutsu. Now, before anyone could go up to Deku and ask him what, what did he, what was his quirk, um, President Mike would then come on to the. Come on to the um, what is it called? Now onto the screen, before um, before then telling everyone to prepare for battle. This is what would shock everyone, at, especially President Mike, as no one was really supposed to get this, as Deku had disappeared into the, as this Deku had disappeared into the arena. As all of the students begin to complain about Deku cheating before President Mike says that he wasn't wrong, there's no countdowns to a battle, as they all start to run in. Now, um, if I'm being honest, Deku would, um, would have transported into the middle of the arena, or into the area, the middle of the city, this fake city, before then, con um, before conjuring up a bunch of sand, which seemed to be seeped from the, it seems to come up from the concrete. He was like, "Yo, Gara can't do that." What that I did not mention was that Deku, when he had landed at the arena, had forced some of uh, some of his, um, forced some of the sand from his gourd underground, um, 
breaking up the rocks, making new sand, a bunch of new sand under the arena for him to use. Or under the city for him to use. Now, Deku... Deku would have basically... Um, would have been seen as he was surrounded by at least 30 robots ranging from 3 to 2, po two to 3 pointers. Let's say there's at least... 10... No, let's say... 11 three-pointers and the rest um, I believe that's 19 two-pointers Oh, I believe that's 71 points No, uh, 71 points actually so Deku would have already racked up 71 points, which would have actually been enough to pass. Deku, obviously doing his research, would have seen this, but he would have continued to go on. But he also would have then had a bunch of sand appear behind others, helping them defeat sand monsters, ranking him up a bunch of hero points. At this time, Deku would have probably ranked up around 100, maybe 150 when it comes to hero points. So when I say 150, that's 221 overall points already. Now Deku will go around um, destroying minor one point robots for a couple minutes, taking his time obviously. We don't want him to rack up way too many points. <laughs> As th um, this is when President Mike would then tell everyone that the zero pointer is now appearing. They're actually going to warn the students. As the students then begin to run away. As Deku would have been sitting there, just well, standing there with his arms crossed, as he then sees Uraraka, as he was about to turn around to walk out of the area. He then sees Uraraka and sees that he doesn't have enough time to do anything else. So Deku has one one jutsu in mind. The jutsu that I it's kind of a modification to the jutsu. I actually have to see if there there this jutsu actually exists, or if I'm just creating something off the top of my head. But I hope. Hopefully it doesn't, because then I look like an idiot, and it looked like my memory is pretty bad, and I just don't remember this being true, so. So I decided to go with a different jutsu. This is when Deku will then call out a jutsu. This is called Sand Tomb, or Sand Burial Prison. Played the games a lot, actually, so kind of. But, um, this is, you know, the move that Deku, that, not Deku, that Gara used against Kimimaru to bring him under the ground around 200 meters from what he said. Deku would use that ability, except drag, pushing his chakra to its utmost limits, dragging the zero pointer up to 500 meters underground. As everyone would then see as the zero, as the zero pointer is now gone. Uraraka is now no longer in danger as Deku used some of the sand from that attack which is kind of why it was so much chakra draining to create a sand a sand cloud to float Uraraka well to um, a sand arm that will lift up the rubble on top of Uraraka then a sand a sand cloud that he used you know to trans what is it called a um the sand cloud thing that he used to travel in the air like when he had um when Arjo got his Biju taken away from him that to float Uraraka away so she wouldn't be sucked down there too. Now Deku would have then collapsed. As Deku would then say, release. As Deku would have post up enough chakra not only to release the Jutsu but to bring the zero pointer back up. As everyone is shocked to see as the zero pointer comes back up and a little, is it, it's literally squished like it has layers but it's squished down real flat. And it stands no tall. How tall? It says the zero point was 50 meters. So how tall is, um, how tall is 50 meters? Hold up. It stands at around five feet now. and has around a, a bunch of layers. Apparently, uh, um, 50 meters is 150, 164 feet and 0 0.504 inches. That's how tall 50 meters is apparently. Dang, I would just wish the America would just use the, um, I believe this is called the metric system. I don't really know that. 
in too depth anyways but yes as Deku would then hear applause as Deku turns around to see, hear, to see some of the pro heroes and then the students clapping for what he did as this is when a little mouse bear dog thing would come out as he introduces himself as Nezu as Nezu says wow what you did was pretty amazing and I did not see that coming if I'm being honest but for you to send him under the ground to get him that compressed how far did you send him down as Deku said around 500 feet around 500 meters normally the limit of the jutsu is 200 meters and that's without pushing my reserves of energy but now it but I pushed it so much that it's now 500 Nezu says that's more than double it's like one and a half times I believe that's let me let me do math real quick let me do some math real quick 200 times 1.5 nope 2.5 200 times 2.5 wait a minute 200 times 2.5 yeah that's 500 says wow that's it means 2.5 times um, much energy as you should put in there. As Nessa says, but you should really not overexert yourself. As he points at Deku, as Deku's nose, as Deku then gets his finger and wipes it under his nose, as he then sees blood. Right there. As Deku then begins to get a migrating headache. As Deku then communicates with Shikaku, hey Shikaku, could you take care of that? Shikaku says, no problem. And Shikaku. And then, um, <laughs> as Izuku, all oh, Izuku hears is, um, is Shikaku's maniacal laughter as he begins to feel Shikaku's chakra running through him and, um, healing his, um, his headache and the nosebleed, stopping the nosebleed even more. Now, this is when Nezu will walk up to Deku and say, I would like to personally tell you here and now that you most de definitely have made it into UA and you will be in class 1A. I, we see a lot of potential in you. If you've shown off what? I don't know how many abilities he's shown off. One, two, three, four, five. I won't say five. He won't say he showed off five. You've shown off only five of your abilities. You seem pretty in tune with your quirk. As Deku says, yeah, I've been training it for years. By my sensei, he has the same quirk as me. Who I actually get this power from. Now, a person behind Deku, uh, behind Nezu will be a little bit intrigued. The person he gets this power from, like that does sound a little bit like him, but he he'll have to look into it. Nezu is getting the same, thinking the same thing. Like, could it be him? As Nezu would say, well, we looked at your files and it said that you were quirkless. Would you like to accompany me and the other pro heroes to your to my office, so that we can discuss how you somehow got your quirk? As Deku would say. I might have to reveal it to you, eh? But they, just, they might not let me in. Because I'm, I'm just going to say it's a, it's, there's a law that keeps you literally from lying on your medical record about you with, or, or lying about whether you have a crook or not. So, Deku would accompany Nezu to his office. As Nezu would say, now, <clears throat> we've had some suspicions. Do you know any man but um, with the name of Shigaraki? As Deku would say, no, I actually I've made a um, met a kid. Named, I believe Tomiro Shigaraki, that was his name, I think. But that was it, and he was um he was one of the high schoolers that used to bully me, um not bully me. That used to always be at the underpass that I walked past. Oh, and any other Shigarakis? Do you know? No. Now, what do you mean that your power comes from your sensei? As Deku would then tell them that this is a pretty big thing, as he then tells them, "Have they ever heard of reincarnate of, of a reincarnation?" And some of them say, like they read about it and like um that of, uh, yeah, you know, what is it? um and about it in different religions and different books and things like that. As Deku would say, "Well, he's a reincarnation of a." Um, of a very very powerful man from a different world by the name of Gara, and he also has Gara's beast, the Bijou, which is made of energy sealed within him. 
as All Might then comes up to Deku and says, Why did you ask me if you could become a hero without a quirk? As Deku would then say, because he is essentially quirkless. Quirkless is quirks are really much superpowers that he was that the person will be born with or born that will be unlocked later on. I was born with this, but it's not a quirk. I still have the joints in my pinky to show. Along with the other quirk test that we had ran. Then why do you consider yourself quirkless if you have this power? You can just say you have a quirk. Well, <clears throat> my goal is to become number one hero. But for a different reason. My goal is to become number one hero. To show that even quirkless people, people who are considered quirkless, can be very useless and, and useful and helpful. And not useless. As everyone is a little bit there, as they says, he wants a quirk that people to see quirkless people, even though most of them are elderly as equals, rather than them being beneath those of people with quirks. She says, "Are you ever going to reveal that information about you being a reincarnation to the public?" As Deku says, "Maybe, maybe when I become a pro hero, or when I reach top ten, or my or become number one hero." <clears throat> As Nazu would say, well, thank you, young Midoriya, for telling. Thank you, Midoriya, for telling us this. I'm glad you, you could trust us with this information. As Deku says, you're welcome. As he says, come here for you. Wait, come um, come by tomorrow. We want to see how well your powers are, how strong your powers are. <clears throat> Now this is where we get into a time skip. I'm not really going to go over him and he's showing their him this, their powers or how strong they are. There's no reason he's Gara. If you watch Naruto, if you're watching this, what if you know who Gara is? If you're watching the what if you also know who Deku is, and you're not, you're okay with me spoiling? <laughs> um, I believe, I believe it's seasons one through three or one through four. It's one of those. So I so yeah, I might end it off at three. I might end it off in four. I don't know. <clears throat> now. Um, we time skip to the start of UA. Now, this is when Deku would then be approached by Aizawa in the hallway on his way there. Aizawa would then tell Deku that he's going to be doing a quick apprehension test and he wants him to show his strongest ability and he wants him to bring it up to show him him at his strongest each and every one of the quirk assessments tests as he says that he could see that Deku was holding back when they came when he came to demonstrate his powers um at the day after the entrance exams as Deku would nod as Aizawa and Deku would walk into class and Aizawa then introduce himself before then telling everyone to put their clothes put the their gym clothes on because they're going to be doing um because they're going to be doing what is it called damn <laughs> because they're going to be doing a quirk apprehension test. I believe that's what it's called. I'm, I'm literally on the phone while making this whatever, so I'm sorry if I have space out and forget things. Now, everyone put on their gym clothes and would then walk out into the area of where they would do the quirk apprehension test. But this one, as I would then reveal everyone their scores, as he would then say, Midoriya, you got the highest scores in UA history on the entrance exams. What was the farthest you could throw a softball without using your powers? As everyone's wondering, why didn't he just say quirk? But then, you know, they'll just think that he just said power to replace quirk or something. As Deku would then say, pretty far, like, around, I want to how what's the farthest baseball throw made by man today, actually? Deku would then say 135 meters. She says, you do realize that's close to the world record for the longest baseball throw. As I said, without your abilities, as Deku says, my physical abilities are pretty high, also, due to my training of using my power. Everyone's shocked again, like, you know, I was thinking again, why is he saying power instead of quirk? But we'll brush it off again. As I would then say, well, I want you to use your quirk, use your strongest ability that you have to, to throw this baseball, but as long as you are, you are in the circle. You guys are wondering what I mean by that, and why I emphasize you are in the circle. Now, this is when Deku would nod before then standing up, or maybe before walking into the circle with the baseball. 
as he would then tell Shokaku that he's going to allow him to take control. For Deku, um, Deku still is kind of like guard, so Deku does have to be a sleeper for Shukaku to take over. But since Shukaku's a lot calmer and a lot more, you know, nicer to Deku than he was to guard at the start of the anime, he actually doesn't try to take De Deku over. So she, Deku would then begin to go through hand signs as he says, playing possum jutsu. As he falls limp, as everyone's wondering what Deku's doing. Before they then see the sand from other, um, sand begins to come from Deku's gourd. And sand begins to erupt from his body also. As Deku's encompassed in the ball, before that ball explodes, and coming out of that ball is Shukaku, a giant t t t raccoon dog made of sand with tattoos on him. As they then hear Shukaku saying, Finally, I'm free after so long. As Shukaku then says, Huh? All right. He says he wanted me to throw this. As I was just staring up at that Shikaku, a little with a lot of fear actually on him, Shikaku is releasing a presence, a presence of death, but a present, but also a present of heat to signify him. Well, you know, kind of being a sand dog raccoon. You know, sand is obviously a lot, a lot of times um, reference to heat, like you know, the desert, the beach. You know what I mean. So. This is when Shikaku would then throw the ball as far as he can before Shikaku would then say, air bullets before hitting his stomach, spinning out an air bullet, hitting the baseball, so he didn't get even further, getting a total of 7,560 meters. Now I'm going to see how long that is. Never mind, that would be going out of Japan. No, why not? It would then tell um, Aizawa that the ball went out of Japan and into another country. Shocking Aizawa. She's like, did this kid, did this, whatever this thing is, just throw a baseball outside of the country of Japan. Chicago is taking up a lot of space. And this is when Chicago would say, alright, as Chicago, Deku had told Chicago to let him take back over. As Shukaku then does uh, the same jutsu hand that Deku did to call forth um, the dude to play impossible to do before doing it himself, allowing Deku to take over, take control over his body. Now I'm going to be revealing revealing a fact soon. Well, a fact actually right now. Deku can use the playing possible jutsu, and instead of Shukaku, he can actually allow Gara himself to take over. So when actually when Deku does that, the sand surrounds him and then makes him grow into more of a wait. How old did I say Deku was? Sixteen, seventeen. So he should be as tall as Gara. But yeah, he would be as tall as Gara and things like that. He basically become Gara even though he's already Gara. So and, uh, you know. So yeah, <clears throat> now I would be pretty impressed. Well then, um, we we'll then continue on with the test. As Deku actually began to ace, almost everyone coming in first and almost everything except one was being the side jumps. <sighs> Mineta beat him in that. He was doing it pretty well. He was doing that pretty well. And Deku scored one, number one overall in the test. Now, there was never a threat about expulsion systems. No one um, complained about or said that uh, school was fun and things like that. So, um... You know, seen said that the test seems fun or something, so there was never a threat of expulsion. But as I would, wouldn't have expelled anyone, seeing as how he sees the class as having an immense potential, so that would happen. Now moving on to the U. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm gonna end up. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know actually. Um, let's just go on. Not into the USJ event. Or do I want to skip the All Might thing? I'm not sure. I just might do something different with that. I might push that to later on after the USJ. Yeah, that's what I think I'll do. <clears throat> this is gonna be before the sports festival. After you, um, before the sports festival, but after USJ. So. <clears throat> Alright, now, now that we're getting into the USA incident, Aizawa will come into the classroom, then tell the class to sign, to take, it to, to take a permission slip to their parents that they're going to be going to the USA. Now, when anyone starts to think of um, 
Universal Studios at Japan or something, you know, he would immediately shut that down. <clears throat> now, obviously, everyone would get their permission to sound and would go and prepare for the USJ the next day. Now, upon arriving to the USJ, everyone would be in a hero costume. Now, everyone else had a uh, probably had like really like some cost costumes with support, like with support um, items and things like that. But Deku's was really Gara's. Um, the out the outfit of Gara that you see, the P the PNG that you or the render or PNG that you see right now throughout the video. Um, the PNG that you see now is basically what Deku looks like. That's the outfit of Gara's that he's wearing. So that Gara, yeah. You know, everyone's a little bit surprised that Deku doesn't really have any support items. But, but the, everyone did look at his leg and ask Deku what's in that pouch on his leg. Because Deku would then pull out a kunai and some shuriken. So this uh, ninja knife and ninja stars? Uh, Tose. I mean, there's Gara with it. Or Deku was, you know, a kunai and, and shuriken. Oh, the actual terms of the weapons. Oh. As Zelda then says, come on everyone, hurry up and get inside. Well, everyone would then meet up with the Pro Hero 13. Now, 13 would then begin to explain to everyone how using quirk, um, they, their quirks, um, if used wrong, their quirks can be dangerous, very dangerous. It could hurt others and they'll hurt other heroes and those that they, that they are trying to save. I'm going to give a little speech about the quirks. Everyone how this would happen. Everyone would then walk into the USJ. And upon everyone entering, Deku would then begin to sense something. As Deku says, Shikaku, can you sense that? Shikaku, in Deku's mind, says yes. Gar says, I can sense it too. As this is when Deku's the gourd will pop off. As everyone looks at him as they heard the noise. As they then see a purple mist form. As everyone is shocked, but before the purple mist can fully form, everyone then sees a giant, um, see a giant wave of sand heading, heading towards the, towards the, um, towards the purple mist. As Deku then says, Sand Tsunami. Or as Deku, uh, as the waves of sand begin to crash upon all the villains. Now, the only three to get out of the way being Shigaraki, the Nomu, and Kuragiri. And Shigaraki would then land on top of the sand. He says, huh, a sand quirk. Wow, that'll be very annoying. Kuragiri says, would you like me to take care of him? She told me about Shigaraki. Shigaraki says, yes, take care of him, Kuragiri. As Kurigiri would then warp in front of everyone and then would then warp, send his purple mist around Deku. And this is when Kurigiri would then try would then warp Deku away as everyone then sees Deku appear in the op, in the water zone. As they then see Deku hit the ground, but over shot Kurigiri, Nomu, Shigaraki, and the rest of the class and is the fact is the Deku that hit the water was made of sand. As Deku has used a sand clone and used the replacement jutsu with it. As this is when Kurigiri will then begin to um begin to feel the um then begin to feel the hardness of him having to breathe as Deku has used um not sand burial, I believe it was sand coffin Sand coffin, and um, since his sand was constantly climbing up and trying to cling onto something of Kurigiri, which it then clamped around, you know, Kurigiri's neck brace. As Tomura says, Nomu, take care of him. As Nomu then appears behind Deku, only for Deku to dodge. As, Kuri, as Shigaki says, how can you keep up with Nomu? That guard is a Kage. He has to. He has to at least be a whole lot faster, faster than Kurigiri uh, or Nomu at least. So you know, make guard fast enough to dodge 
Dodson. They mean ninjas are pretty fast. You got Naruto, who's faster than light. Minato, who's also faster than light. Sasuke, I think Sasuke is faster than light. I'm not sure. Maybe under Naruto, maybe not even faster than light. I'm not sure. Um, pretty sure Mar Madara could you um and Obito could move at the speed of light. I'm not sure. Raikage, well, not past the speed of sound. I think it was at the speed of thunder or speed of lightning. It was one of those. And that's how fast Naruto characters move now. Obviously, um, I believe the speed, the sound, to, um, to go past the speed of sound is 600 miles an hour. Deku will be able to move at least a thousand. It's just, I'm just gonna get from my number. I mean, shinobis are pretty fast in the Naruto world speed. Like, they're getting level speed. Then there's tuning, joining, elite joining, Kombu, and then Kage level speed. And then there's not even just Kage, there's low Kage, mid, high. And then, um, God Shinobi Kage. There's many different levels to speed in the Naruto world. And God is at least mid, mid Kage. So he's pretty fast. Now, as obviously, guard dodges the attack, which was suck. No along with um, Shigaraki. And Shigaraki says, No move, stop playing around, get him. As no would then throw another punch, only for Deku to jump in the air and kick him in the face. We do know Guard does know some does no Taijutsu. Obviously, I think Deku at the um Broccoli beat Guard and Chun and Zam's Guard did learn Taijutsu. Learned did actually learn hand to hand combat. <clears throat> but what will shock everyone is when Deku would send this thing flying, this Nomu as Shigaraki would call it, flying, with just a kick. As Deku has implemented his leg with chakra. <clears throat> as the sand is still forming around Kurigiri. <clears throat> this is when Gar, not Gar, Deku will then make a sand clone. As the sand clone then maintains the jutsu. As Deku then goes and envelops himself in a dome of sand. Develop himself in the dome of sand and would begin to transform into Shikaku or into a mini version of Shikaku. I don't want to say, I'm going to say it's probably like just the arm variation, the arm and a tail of Shikaku. That's probably what he has at the moment. I want to say that's that. As when Deku would arrive, everyone would be a little bit shocked to see what Deku has. <clears throat> As Deku would then speed off towards the normal for throwing a punch, sending the normal flying. As Deku, as a um, a pile of sand would then appear behind the Nomu. As the sand then wrapped around the Nomu's arms before Deku and legs before the Deku then sang. Um, move sand coffin is when he squeezes his hand and you know sand compresses around everyone. So the sand coffin around Kurigiri is slowly compressing instead of fast compression. So it's only meant to incapacitate Kurigiri actually. <clears throat> but Nomu, Deku's literally trying to tear Nomu's limbs off. Which he would do, but what shocked Deku is when Nomu would then regenerate his limbs. As Shikaraki would then say as well, Nomu has a very high regeneration. Um, regeneration ability. Along with, um with shock absorption. He was built to handle All Might. The Deku says, so he was able to handle All Might, is what you're saying. Yes. We'll handle this. As Deku would appear behind the Nomu, with his claw out, as Deku would then stick his claws into the Nomu's head, until his disposal break, causing the Nomu immense pain. The one weakest of the Nomu I'm gonna make it being the brain. As Nomu begins to scream out, as Shigaraki says, What are you doing to Nomu? Heroes don't do this. You're cheating. As Deku would then say, There's no cheating in battle. I'm taking every advantage I can get, and you left a w obvious advantage, being his brain being exposed. Now, Gar does have lightning and earth release. So, Everyone would then see as Deku's palm begins to crackle like electricity is around as Deku Deku's added lightning chakra to his hand. As Deku then touches Nomu's brain before sending an electrical shock to it, knocking the Nomu out. 
as Shigaraki would then run towards Deku at a surprisingly high speed, but not too. F Deku was still easily able to track him. He's nowhere near as fast as the Nomu. As Shigaraki. <clears throat> Anyways, as uh, Shigaraki, he then says, I got you now. But before he can do anything, Deku. Uh, I mean, Deku would have sand around Shigaraki's outreached arm. And Shigaraki would try to crumple the sand, but this is quite stupid. I'm being honest, to crumble sand even more, to decay the sand even more, wouldn't it just make smaller sands? Which would be even harder to sense. As Deku, um, as Shigaraki gets a hand on the sand, as Deku would then begin, his arm, he would then take arm, sand from his arm, as it begins to form a spear. I believe the name of this jutsu is Shikaku Sand Spear. If I'm not wrong, I hopefully I'm not. It's Spear Shukaku, actually. That's what it's called. <clears throat> As Shigaraki says it, you're also able to make weapons out of your sand. Pretty impressive for a kid. As Deku would then twirl the this, this spear in his hand before then hitting, uh, before then swiping it on um, Shigaraki's hand, cutting it open. Shigaraki wasn't able to get all five fingers on, not allowing it to decay. As Deku would then swing it around, hitting Shigaraki right in the face with the flat side of it, sending Shigaraki flying. As Aizawa then then appear besides Deku, saying, "We've been taking care of the the young the other heroes. Good job holding them off." As Deku then says, "You're welcome." As Deku then says, "I might have something to keep him at bay." She says, "What is it? You're gonna have to buy me some check, some time. Just trust me on this." And Aizawa says, "I trust you." As Deku would then sit down, or actually have sand begin to flow into the ground. Shigaraki doesn't know what Deku's doing, but Deku knows what he's doing. So, um, Aizawa will begin to fight, um, begin to fight, um, Shigaraki for a couple minutes. Like, I want to say around five minutes. <clears throat> Before... Deck would then say it's finally done. <clears throat> As he would then say, Aizawa, get back. As this is when Aizawa would jump back, only to see sand bursting from the ground. And Shigaraki didn't notice that he had stepped on sand. As Deku would then say, Grand Sand Mausoleum Seal. As he would then claps his hands. Into the Ram Seal. As sand would then begin to ar arise around Shigaraki, forming that of a pyramid of sorts. Before seals would then begin to spread around him, they would begin to arrive on the on top of the um, what is it called? On top of the sand. Before. Shigaraki was able to use his quirk, sealing him away inside of the sand. This is when Kurigiri is all. I'm about to pass out with all for one within since um, within the instant Kurigiri's transponder or something, something to let him know if Kurigiri or Shigaraki is in trouble. He isn't able to get to Shigaraki, but he is able to get Kurigiri. He says, "Damn it, there goes Shigaraki. I'll have to retrieve him later, if possible." You know what? No, I don't need him anymore. I'll just complete my plans on my own and get a new body. No, I'm not going to do the new body thing, but I'll just complete my plans on my own. As this is when Alpha One forcefully activate Kurigiri's quirk, forcing him to warp himself away. Even though it was with great strain on Kurigiri's body. <clears throat> As this is when 
All I want to see is Kurigiri appears in front of him with sand surrounding him. Oh, shock off one. Is when the sand will then begin to form an eye as Deku m miles and miles away, meters and meters away, miles and miles away, kilometers, kilomiles. I don't think that's what it's called, kilomiles. Um, but yeah, meters and things like that away. Is Abe was touching his eye, closing it. As he's now seeing through the sand die. As he isn't able to hear through it. But he is able to see. As, you know, Awful One is intrigued by this. As he then begins to talk. But sees the eye doesn't do anything. As Kirigiri then begins to write something. I mean, not Kirigiri. Awful One. But then tell Izuku. Tell All Might I'll see him soon. And I can't wait to get to you, to Izuku Midoriya. Your quirk will be very useful in my hands. And this will end off the USA incident. And this is where I'll be ending off part two of What If Deku was God's reincarnation. This is actually a pretty long part. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys later. Join the Discord in the link in the description.